Hello, Nevada Realtors. Chris Bishop here, your 2020 Nevada Realtors president, and I'm here with our special uh, co MCs of this uh, amazing, amazing podcast. It's not soup yet. Uh, Tom Blanchard and Keith Lynham. Uh, guys, I hear that once the snow cleared at Capitol Hill, you guys, uh, you guys had an interesting week with a new bill. Tell us all about it. Uh, look, the, the snow hasn't even cleared, right? <laughs> and, and we're still getting little uh, text messages with pictures of snowy traffic as Rocky and the crew are trying to get to where they got to go, complaining about it. But we're still here in this wonderful weather down here in Las Vegas. Yeah, 65 degrees right after that weekend. <laughs> Crazy. But um, I, I was out walking my dog. I didn't send them a picture of my uh, partly sunny skies in 65 as I walked my dog this morning. But uh, yeah, you know, so we had the um, a call for action uh -huh. on Monday for SB uh, 68. And prior it is interesting, and I'm sure it'll be in the advocate this week. So take a look at it. Um, we're very effective uh, prior to us doing the call for action the little response draft of people calling in uh, was all for mm -hmm. the SB 68. If you don't know what SB 68 is, it was an increase in the real property tax. Uh, 40 cents. Charge, uh, 40, uh, I mean, yes, a small increase. Um, and yes, for a great cause, wrong funding mechanism, right? I mean, you just can't use that kind of a funding mechanism to to help get rid of homelessness and mental health issues. Sure. Right. But I got, I got to ask you guys, because I, we've talked about this many times before, there was a measure about four sessions ago to raise the uh, private property transfer tax to like $12 and 50 cents per thousand. This was a raise of 40 cents per thousand. So let's just say for sake of conversation on a $500,000 deal, uh, we have that increase of the 40 cents per thousand. We're looking at like a $200 difference. So, I mean, it's not, it's not going to cripple the real estate industry, but your point is that, you know, we're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars that get raised from the transfer of property in the state and where the, that money goes and the programs it's allocated for, you can't easily change once it's been set up. Yeah. And so if it's going to the wrong or somewhere different. Yeah, Chris, three things. First, it's not $200 um, yeah. as the proponents. It's, it's 2,500. Um, uh, it's, it's not the fall that kills you. It's the sudden stop. And so, yeah, their, their argument is, well, it's only $200. Well, no, it's not. It's $2,500. That's first of all, oh, total second fee. of all, $200 yeah, total fee. but that, that's how they get you in there. That's how we ended up when I moved here of uh, a sales tax of 4% to now, what is it like 27%? I'm kidding only slightly. Um, because it's only a penny. It's only 1% of 1%. It's only, well, then now all of a sudden we've got a 9% sales tax. So, but we did it one penny at a time. Um, I, I, and I, you're right, but it's not. And, and so here's why it's not is because it's also historically one of the most unpredictable taxes we have. Yeah. When times are great, they're great. When they're not, they're not. And then finally, it's the most regressive. It's a sales tax. It's the most regressive tax we have. So it hits those hardest that they are trying to help with this bill. So that and many other reasons is why this is a bad deal. Yeah, I mean, it, it's sort of crazy. We're gonna tax the uh, the one thing that we're trying to make affordable, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. You good know, point. so. Well, that's a good point. Yeah, craziness, right? And, and let's try to put a Band-Aid on a gaping wound of the homelessness and, and mental health, right? Uh, to me, and I'll probably get in trouble for saying this, it appeared to be like a money grab for those groups that are already on the dole of getting money from the government to, sure. to assist, right? Because it wasn't it, it wasn't enough to help really fix the problem or even um, put a dent in it. Their own numbers show that they'd only help 1,300 people over six years. That's 200 people uh, a, a year. I mean, we. It's quick whole, math, folks. This is the stuff is, we do. Uh, well, I had to do it for the test later, right? Um, <laughs> yeah. We, we need to be, if, if, if you're going to tackle that issue, tackle it. Sure. Right? Don't keep messing around with a little band aid here and a band aid there and hope the heck to stop, you know, Lake Me from, you know, flowing out into California. We got to be more um, realistic in what we're doing. And they didn't even ask us to come to the table. Yeah. That's the other crazy thing, right? I mean, here you are going to attack an industry uh, and, and try to tax it to increase your own funds 
um, and not even come to the table and say, hey, what do you think about this? That's the bad thing. And if we did more talking together, we probably have better um, ways of fixing things. Sure. No, I, I, I think the, the one question I'd ask the two of you, because this is how it always starts, right? We've, we've been through this many times in a session, is it seems like he said a very minuscule thing, 40 cents per thousand, um, but when you think of, you know, 40,000 transactions in Southern Nevada, you think of probably 25 to 30 transactions, <coughs> transactions in Nevada, um, it's a lot of deals and it affects a lot of people, but it affects them on the way out. Yep. They're selling their property and leaving and going to buy something else or move out of state or whatever else. And so I could see why that's attractive, but your point is well taken that it's just the beginning of where they go next year and the year after that and the year after that. So I... I think that's, you know, many members will ask, well, why is this such a big deal? Why are you doing so much about it? And I love the response, Keith, that it's just the beginning and uh, whatever Tom's math was that he was doing. Well, yeah. <laughs> also, there's another bill being bantied about that would um, relieve somebody from even paying the real property transfer tax. I mean, so it just doesn't make sense to use that um, vehicle to fund anything. Right. Yeah, we, we a number of years ago, we had uh, a former speaker, uh, Barbara Buckley, come in and talk to our legislative um, uh, committee. And, and a couple of important points to that is, um, yes, Barbara is a Democrat. And yes, we have supported Democrats in the past and we will in the future. Some of the comments we got was, well, you're supporting all these Democrats. Well, I guess the strategy then should be let's support those that lost because yeah. they won. So, yeah, this is the brilliant strategy in return is let's support the losers so that we can talk to the losers on November instead of the winners in Carson City. Brilliant strategy. Love it. Keep them coming. Here's the here's a salient point to the, to the speaker's point in that she pointed to the to the real property transfers tax specifically in our meeting and said we shouldn't rely on that tax because it is so unreliable when the when the when the tax when the when the transactions bomb and they will you can't bond against that you can't rely on that and all those things that we relied on are now behind the eight ball so that's why you don't do it before we burn the soup uh just i want to put out there that uh that you guys uh kind of yeah it's not soup yet it's not soup yeah. yet it's not in a can either. Um, you guys kind of talked about uh, the fact that we had a call to action. And so I want to explain to the members watching this. So, um, I noticed that an email was sent out with a, with a pretty broad description of what was going on, uh, the position of LMT and the legislative committee, uh, the reasons behind why this is not a great idea, and the ability to contact elected officials and tell them uh, as a realtor, as a realtor party member, we do not support this. We want you to take a second look at it. Um, Tom already mentioned that because of that call to action and the work you guys did, uh, you already had a 180 committed by those that uh, that were supporting it. Right. That you know, I think you said 80% were supporting, and now 80% are against. So great job to those that participated and those that took part. Um, we also had the opportunity, and and you guys both did uh, testify. Uh, to our legislators about the bill itself. And so this is the process working. Uh, Tom, you mentioned that there's a, there's always a, a mystical event that happens when people come to testify. Tell us more. Yeah, um, look, look, it's it's so important to have a structured response because we sat there for an hour and a half listening to people that were for the bill, right? And it was every single mental health person every single person that had mental health issues, you know, saying the same thing over and over and over again. And you could see on the speaker, uh, O'Neill's or Neil's um, face that she was done with it. Yeah. Right. She was done uh, a good 15, 20 minutes into it of listening to the opposition or the, for, uh, the people in favor of it. Not that she didn't think it was a, a good bill or a bad bill, but just the fact that it was just the same thing over and over and over again. And even when we, we went up and we did our thing, you know, Keith took one part, Azim took another part, and I took another part. And we set our... You layered it. We, we, and set our piece, gave them some structure of why it's bad, um, and went, went our own way. Now, other people just say no, right? 
They've already used that campaign yeah, I mean, before. You can't use that, right? You just can't go up there and just be uh, a negative Nelly um, or be someone, oh, we just need this, right? Because that does not move the needle. And as we've seen in Congress and, and everywhere else, that those far extremes of just saying, oh, we just, we just need it or no, we just can't have it doesn't work. Yeah. Right. It makes us very ineffective. <laughs> the, the, we, we always have a very structured, very scripted response to, into what we do. Um, and, and that's why this this whole it's not soup yet is 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 important. It's a process that we go through. We have the ability and the unique position of having one of the best lobbying teams in the state working for us on the ground. So they're communicating all the time. Look, I mean, the other side killed themselves by going up there and doing this and me also. And, and as I've said, when the other side is shooting at themselves, just hand them more bullets. Our entire response was less than five minutes, but it was more effective than their hour and a half. So trust the process. And sometimes just going up there and not saying anything and just sitting down and shutting up is the best way to do it. I mean, the chairperson, uh, Chairman Neil, was even telling people, if you're saying the same thing, just say ditto, ditto. right? Do just it. say ditto. Chairwoman they, Moreno was begging people to say me too, and, and uh, ditto, and she was begging them, and yet she wasn't getting it. So I'm so going to send her my, I'm going to send her my can and say, Chair, just say it's not soup yet, people. Me too. <laughs> Uh, and, and by the way, Campbell's in no way has sponsored this show, but we're always open. <laughs> but we'll take, to but we'll take, we'll take the endorsement. So uh, thank you guys very much for uh, to, for digesting what uh, happened uh, this last week. Appreciate your commitment to to making the process happen. I do want to re reiterate to those out there, uh, this is not realtors don't care about mental health issues or uh, homelessness. We absolutely do, and I think you'll notice on many boards out there, you'll find a realtor on every one of them that you look at. It's the fact that we must protect our industry to be able to set up a better ability to protect those things that are important. And so um, sometimes the message gets skewed in the wrong direction that, yeah. that I remember a couple of years ago, realtors hated children. That's not true. I have a kid that I really like. She's been with me 15 years. Yeah. And so uh, I think the whole point is that uh, please be checking your email. Please be reading The Advocate. And as always, Keith and Tom are here to listen to whatever uh, information or questions you have. And uh, folks, just remember, no matter rain or snow, it's not soup yet. All right.